Hi, welcome to Keys Moz. This is David Fine. Uh, Lorenzo and I are down here on Big Pine Key and No Name Key setting up our stuff after dark. We got a late start. It's our first time down to the lower keys after Hurricane Irma, a Cat 4 hurricane, slammed the lower keys, a direct hit on Big Pine Key. Uh, we're curious to see what moth can possibly survive a Cat 4 storm direct hit. I think you're going to be interested. Stay tuned. This is uh, Watson Boulevard, and so this is one of the pine hammocks that this is one of the pine hammocks that we've uh, actually done fairly well in, uh, right here on the corner of Watson Boulevard and and Key Deer Road. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just mosey up here a little bit until we find. Hopefully, there's still a trail. Ah, uh, here it is. Good. Here's our trail. All right, we're we're here and we're gonna put out a few bucket traps. <laughs> yep. Light up. Bing. Come on. We still got a little bit of daylight. Let's try and make the most of it. He dear, please move. Please move, Mr. Deer. Thank you. All right, so we are here on uh, No Name Key. The time was against us because we had, uh, we got a late start. We had some traffic, right, right, right Lorenzo? Come on, buddy. We had some traffic issues. Uh, we're here with Christy Kellum from the uh, Key Deer Refuge. How are you doing today? Good, how are you guys doing? Yeah, so the big question's been, it's been what, about two months and change since Hurricane Irma came through. Yes. And the big question is, it has been, how is the butterflies and moths gonna survive a, a storm where literally this entire island was under storm surge, is that correct? Yes. More or less? Yes, there was probably three feet of storm surge right here where we're standing. So, so this was three feet deep, so Lorenzo would have been kind of like, the, the water was this deep, the ocean water was this deep right where we're standing a couple months ago. And she says that the, all this vegetation was all uh, wind blown and there was no green and we actually have some Google pictures from from satellite images that prove that um, But the question was are there gonna be any moths? and we put our lights on and within within a couple minutes I mean this has been one of the fastest times where we've gotten some moth activity at the sheet And so like we'll start off by just showing this nice little melopotus guy here I know miss my GoPro isn't the best at macro uh, imagery, but we got a melopotus, we got a great big imperial, female imperial moth, which is always a nice thing to see. Um, but we've got, we've got plenty of things flying around. There is a lot of activity and I am super impressed. Just, we just had them light on for 15, 20 minutes now and we've already got all this activity flying around. So, Let's see what we got. All right, here we got another melopotus on this side, yeah. Got a melopotus on this side. That's Femelica, I think. And the other one was Fossilaria. Yeah, this this is our little, uh, what are they called? Slug, it's a slug moth. Or there's a sphinx moth plopping in. What do we got? <laughs> Hello, Sphinx. Yeah, it's always good to see a Sphinx moth fly. That's an Imperial moth. Imperial. Iacoles Imperialis. And then over here, we have our Black Witch. Oh, these guys are always so cool. Female Black Witch. Yeah, the female's got the white or the lighter band that goes all the way through the forewing and hindwing. Uh, come here. 
see if I can get you guy out so I can show you. Wow, you're super cool. Except beat up. Yeah, she's a little beat up, but you know, she went through a hurricane. What do you expect? <laughs> Black witch. That's a great big mothy. It's a cool moth. Cool moth. But well, it's always neat to see yellow swings. They've got their bright, bright red hind wing. Oh yeah. See them? Wow. See them cruising? Very cool. Oh yeah. Well, I am so encouraged because I was skeptical. You think about um you know, there's there's animals that that or the moths that host plant on or uh, the hosts or the trees that grow higher up. You know, you think they might have a stab at it. But uh, what you got there, Lorenzo? Is that an imperial moth? That is so cool. That is so cool. It's, it's Nature is resilient. If it, I mean, oh, yeah. this itself is just kind of a, a great. Example. It's kind of a breath of fresh air. It is. I really, it, I'm, I'm so excited because I, I was expecting to see like no insect life, and I'd be sitting here in front of this sheet and just talking about how bad things are, but right. things are, things are popping back pretty quick. Right. And November is typically not the highest concentration of moth activity uh, in the adult form anyway. So it's usually, you know, you have more emergence, uh, May, June, July, you have a lot more activity in those months. So to, to come out here in the in the fall, it's a little bit cooler. Um, after a massive storm like Irma, uh, just a couple months after a storm like that, and to see some moths popping around just within an hour of turning on the light is uh, pretty, pretty impressive. That guy is awesome. Imperial moth. So as we're out there in the middle of No Name Key, middle of the night, everything's quiet, just the generator purring in the background. You hear some noises in the bushes. You, it never gets old. You always get scared. But uh, some key deer came to visit us uh, during the course of the night. It's just, it was pretty cool to see them guys. Leaves of trees and fruits, and berries and stuff. Another one. What's that on his legs? What do you mean? See it? He wants to be fed, but we're not going to feed him, are we, Lorenzo? Nope. Because that is illegal. Hi, Mr. Key Deer. Even to touch them, that's illegal. Yeah. Jeez. Curious fellow. Here. He ain't got no food for you, man. <laughs> he got no food for you, bro. No, that's not how we roll, bro. Unless you eat moths, I got nothing for you, bro. I got nothing for you, man. <laughs> They're so cute. You're like a, I don't know. How big are you? Where are you going? Back where you belong? Well, unfortunately, when we came back in the morning, right 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning, all of our lights were turned off. We had some kind of equipment malfunction, uh, which really stinks, but um, you know, we weren't able to get a real accurate picture as to what kind of moths were flying you know, between three and five o'clock in the morning, which is sometimes there's some really interesting things that fly during that time period. Uh, but we'll be back again soon and, and we'll get a better picture then, but this was just an unfortunate incident. Yeah, so we didn't really get a, a, a very good picture of what was out last night at least later on in the evening, but um, you know, we still had great success early on. Sun's starting to come up. The no seams are starting to get really, really bad. And so we are going to pack up and get in. Right, Lorenzo? Yeah. No more no seams. Mm -mm. No seams bad. That's a big buck. That's 
a big buck keeper. Big boy. All right, so we're at No Name Key. This is the little, the little trail that's to the north of the key. We put two light traps here. This one's looking real good. It's all lit up. A little pyralid there on the vein. So, one of the most nauseating things about the keys <laughs> is the noceums. I don't know if you can see them. You can probably see on my against my black shirt. There are thousands and thousands of them, and they swarm you at at, at tw twilight and at sunup and sundown. And they they bite and they hurt and they are tiny. If you've spent any time at all in the Florida Keys, you've experienced noceums. That's right, biting midges. There's these little tiny flies that you can barely see, hence the name. They come out at dusk and dawn and can really be a nuisance. Um, and they bite, they hurt. The females actually bite and drink blood to help with their egg production. In fact, the larval life cycle is, goes anywhere from two to six weeks, which makes a lot of sense because it was right, uh, it, we were there about eight weeks after the hurricane came. And what happened was all the vegetation that had been pushed onto the island from the storm surge and all the cut trees and bushes and stuff like that up on the sides of the road that were waiting for bulk trash. All the, that rotting vegetation provided a perfect breeding ground for noceums and they were terrible. I mean, it was the worst I've ever seen it. They're usually nowhere near that bad. Uh, well, thank God the sun finally came up in that lesson, but uh, now we're gonna go check out our light traps on um, the Big Pine Key and see how we did there. No Name Key just looks terrible, man. What a shame. Big piles of trash on both sides of the road. Absolutely incredible. Oh yeah, look at the mangrove trees there. They're hurting a little bit more, what do you think? Mangroves out on no, no name bridge. But I'll tell you what. That is a gorgeous, gorgeous scene. Look at that view. What an incredible view. We're standing on top of what used to be the No Name Marina. There used to be a bait and tackle shop right here. And the building is just gone. They have no idea where it is. Christy said the building is just not even here anymore. Uh, I don't know, it's probably out in, the, out in the Gulf somewhere. I guess some of the locals are having fun with the garbage. <laughs> because this is the Trash Titan. It's a big boy like a transformer made out of washing machines and pit. that's a boat engine up there. A key deer coming at us. What's up, homie? How you doing, buddy? Is there eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, I see seven. Wow, the damage here is just incredible. You know, the, the poor people and wildlife, the habitats down here just got pummeled. Uh, we're praying and hoping for a speedy recovery uh, with these folks and, and hopefully everything will bounce back quickly. Uh, now it's time to go pick up our light traps and see how we did there. Um, but also we wanna make sure that we just state for the video that all the lands which we're doing our survey work on are property of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and we've been granted special use permits to conduct our uh, surveying work and efforts here. Here we are in the Pines. This is on uh, Watson Boulevard on Big Pine Key. Uh, Lorenzo and I made a stop out here and we put three bucket traps to 
to see what's flying down here. And it's actually, looks like there's some, uh, some activity here. There's a little moth there on the side of one of my bucket traps. Oh, there's a bunch of them, actually. There's several really good reasons why putting out these bucket light traps is helpful. Uh, number one, it surveys the smaller, tiny little moth species that nobody ever really sees and looks at or pays attention to, but we've just uh, discovered several new species right here on Key Deer Refuge just by surveying through these uh, these bucket traps. And so you see a little, little geometric there on the side of the trap. And they also survey all night long here. Whereas if, if you're at the, uh, the light sheet, you know, you can only, you can only see what, what, what you see while you're there. And so this surveys all night long and we get to see a full range of what is going on in a certain area. Yeah, so there's definitely some moth activity. Um, there's several moths sitting right on the sides of the buckets. That's a good sign. The pines have recovered very nicely from what I can tell. I mean, to think that this habitat just two months ago was completely covered in uh, by ocean water with the hurricane and now looks as green and lush as this is, is quite impressive. So um, we actually found quite a few nice moths last night, uh, no name key. So we're gonna check these traps out and see what flew in uh, here as well. After sifting through our light traps and after looking through some of the images and specimens that we took over the course of the evening, we positively identified over 50 species of moths from the lower keys in one night. Uh, we are so in encouraged by that number uh, that in one night, even with a pretty decent equipment malfunction, to identify over 50 species of moths in one night, I think that's more than we ever expected. We're looking forward to seeing what shows up in months to come. Uh, so we're gonna head to the Northern Keys now, and but before we do that, in our next episode, we're gonna have an interview with uh, park ranger Christy Killam. I don't think you're gonna wanna miss this. She's gonna share with us just what the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is doing to kind of help recover uh, from Hurricane Irma, some of the impacts from Hurricane Irma. I think you're gonna wanna see that interview. Uh, guys, that's all the time we have for today, but don't forget to uh, like and subs subscribe to our channel. Please like the video, share it with your friends. If you have any comments, if you have any questions, please comment, we'll respond to you. Um, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. We've got uh, Keys Mods on Facebook and Instagram. And also we have a great website with tons of images and lots of information. It's www.keysmods.com. Uh, check out that website, there's plenty of information there. Until next time, enjoy South Florida, and don't forget to see our next video. Take care.